I know a lot of actors' agents don't call Seymour. Believe me, I appreciate that you call. It's just that... Yes, I guess I'll hold. Boy, agents are always taking another call. Who are they always talking to? Other agents. <laughs> Seymour? Yeah. Well, as I was saying, you know the thing I've noticed most about television? I'm hardly ever on it. <laughs> there were 74 shows that had parts that I could have played last week. 74 shows, Seymour, with an average of three parts each that I could have played. Do you know how many parts that is that I didn't get? 221 parts. 222. 222 <laughs> parts, Seymour. And yesterday, on Break a Mama's Heart, what about the part of Nikki? Well, suppose it was a man with a little selling. <laughs> yes, I'll hold. Boy, the minute I get rolling. Well, don't cool off. Stay angry. Keep some bad thoughts. Right. Seymour. All right, Seymour, now you just listen. Okay, you talk. You talk and I'll listen. All right. No, I'm quiet. No more complaints from me. No more criticizing. No more tactful suggestions. From now on, I'm, I'm just going to listen. I'm all ears. Some mouth, but mostly ears. Yes, Seymour. Yes, Seymour. What? You're kidding. Well, why didn't you say so? Oh, Seymour, of course I'll be there. Oh, Seymour, thank you. You're the best agent a girl ever had. How did he go from the worst to the best like that? Donald, I've got an audition for a Broadway show. Which one? The Revolutionary Heart, starring, are you ready for this? Barry Sullivan. Honey, that's a very big hit. I know it. Well, they have to get a replacement for this girl who has to have her appendix taken out. Oh, what a tough break for her. Well, actually, it's not that bad. You don't really need your appendix. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. Oh, Donald, this could really be an important break for me. I mean, we're talking about the big time. Playing opposite Barry Sullivan. I suppose so. I mean, not only is he a man of tremendous stature, but he's intelligent and charming and attractive. Take it easy. You're leaving him nowhere to go when you meet him. Oh, no, this isn't a joke. This could be a marvelous opportunity. Oh, honey, I'm teasing. I couldn't be happier. Oh, I know. <laughs> We're acting like I already got the part. I mean, I still have to audition for it and everything. I mean, there'll be other girls that are trying out. Well, all I can say is, if I were an intelligent, charming, attractive leading man with tremendous stature who saw several dozen pretty girls walking across the stage, it would still take me only about a half a second to decide I want that girl. <laughs> too bad. I had some business to take care of, and it struck me that you ought to go along. Why would anything strike you like that? It's an opportunity to learn some tricks of my trade. Oh, Daddy, I've got my own trade to learn some tricks of. That's fine, but you have nothing to fall back on. Well, there are those who might disagree with you on that. I was referring to my restaurant. Someday it'll all be yours, and there are plenty of things to learn. For example? For example, do you know how fast the average heavy-duty napkin wears out? Well, that would depend on whether it's used by a man or a woman. Why? Well, a woman wipes across smooth, a man wipes across bristle. That was great. Here a scrape, there a scrape. First thing you know, goodbye napkin. You know, you've got a real feeling. 
See, I don't have as much to learn as you think. And in the meantime, I'm up for a part in the play opposite Barry Sullivan. A Hollywood actor? Is there another one? You never know. There are a lot of phonies running around these days. Yes, I gotta go. Just you be careful. Of what? You know about those Hollywood guys with their women and their carrying on. Daddy, Barry Sullivan happens to be a very respected person. There's never been one word of scandal about him. And besides, I'm up for a job, not an assignation. What? You know. Yes, but how do you know? I read. <laughs> I'm going to be late for my audition. And believe me, the theater's not nearly as wicked as you think. Oh, yeah? And how come the first thing they want is to see your legs? <laughs> Daddy, that sort of thing went out with the gold diggers of 1938. Raise your skirts, girls. I thought this sort of thing went out with the gold diggers of 1937. 38. What do you think of that dark-haired girl? She's got a nice quality. Sensitive, a little fire. I like the redhead. You have excellent taste, Sidney, but for a moment, study that dark-haired girl. She's got a kind of quality. The redhead. That wasn't a moment of study. There was a blink of study. You want me to agree with you because you're a star? Is that what you want? Don't be ridiculous. I want you to agree with me because I'm right. Please hold your voice down if you're going to ridicule me. <laughs> yes, Marie. OK, thank you, girls. You can put your skirt down now. It is down. <laughs> Miss Marie, this is Mr. Sullivan. Yes, I know. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Sullivan feels you're right for the part. Oh, my gosh. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Oh, don't thank me. We need a girl who's provocative, sensitive, exciting. You're very fortunate to have all of those qualities. Thank you. OK, let's run through the scene a few times. Oh, fine. Now, let's see. Your dialogue is on page uh, 63. 63? Is that your unlucky number? Oh, no, of course not. I just thought maybe the character arrived a little earlier than that. You come in late, but very importantly. Oh, well, great. There. This? You pig? Not you pig. You pig! You pig! You pig! You pig! Would you like to try with Mr. Sullivan? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, let Sidney upset you. He's very temperamental, but he's a very talented director. He does make me a little nervous. All right, sweetheart, you're sitting right here. Now, this scene is the climax of the play. O'Casey is on his last legs. He spent his life as a revolutionary, and now he wonders if it's all been worthwhile. He remembers a girl he loved. And lost. The one as if maybe that's why he became what he became. You got it? Got it. He sees you. There's something about you. You grab him. Where? Well, figuratively speaking. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. You get up. He gives you a long, yearning look, and he says, Have you something for me, woman? And then I say, You stop. Look at him, walk over, then you say... You pig. You pig! You pig! You pig, you pig! Just once! <laughs> then you slap his face and walk out. He breaks down and gives his big curtain speech. What more can I ask, informer, gutted, rotting, how? Etc. Etc. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think so. Well, let's try. Oh, fine. Huh? Sure. <sighs> Have you something for me, woman? You pig. <laughs> what more can I expect in form of gutted, rotting hope? Hold it. What was that? That. Huh. That wasn't right. I I'm sorry. Well, let's try it again, Miss Marie. Oh, thank you. Have me something for me, woman. You pig. <laughs> Miss Marie, you can't possibly hurt me. 
No, no, I know that. I, I mean, I thought that I might, but I, but I know that I couldn't. It's just that I, I knocked the heck out of a panda bear when I was five. And... In order to kick off this scene, this climax to act two, we need a real wallop here. As an actor, Mr. Sullivan needs a physical jolt to release his tension. It's a basic motivation. Yeah, yes, I, I understand. Well, uh, won't do it. No, I, I'm sorry about that. You've slapped guys before, haven't you? Well, actually, no, I haven't. Come on, what are you kidding? <laughs> Sydney. Sydney, what's the matter with you? Can't you see Miss Marie is a lady? Ladies, we got plenty. What we need is an actress. It's just that I, I'm not a very hostile person. We'll take a little break and we'll try it again. We're running out of time. We've got plenty of time. This time, I don't agree with you. This time, you're wrong. And this time, I'm a star. <laughs> Ten minutes, everybody. I'll tell you the truth, Miss Mary. I really prefer the stage to motion pictures. Oh, well, you can't get a very good look at you on the stage. Well, it's not as intimate a medium. No, it isn't. That's a shame, isn't it? What I mean is, in motion pictures, it's very easy to create illusions. But on the stage, Miss Mary, I need to be slapped. Really? I wouldn't lie to you. Oh, no, no, no. I understand. Come in. Sarcasm. Would you and your protege like to try it again? I think Miss Mary and I are ready to give it another try. Aren't we? I feel a little bit like Anne Marie Antoinette on the way to the guillotine. I have every confidence in you. Oh, Mr. Sullivan, why are you being so nice to me? Well, to begin with, I think you've got talent. And I remember how it was to be young and eager and to need help to get started. That sort of gives you a responsibility to help the next fellow that comes along. I use the word fella advisedly. <laughs> how can I ever thank you? It's very simple. Hit me. <laughs> Between us? Between me and Barry Sullivan. Oh, honey. You didn't get the part. Oh, I got the part. But I couldn't hit him, Donald. Why didn't you call me? I'd have hit him for you. Why should you hit him? I don't know. You wanted to hit him. That's good enough for me. Oh, no, no. It's in the play. He's just an informer in the Irish Republican Army, and I don't want to have anything to do with him. Oh. <laughs> Second act climax depends on my slapping him. And I couldn't slap him. I can't slap anybody. Do that. I never slapped anybody, Donald. Well, I find that hard to believe. Hasn't a man ever made improper advances to you? Of course. Many men have made improper advances to me. I just don't happen to react with violence. That's reassuring. But the thing that upsets me so much is letting Barry down. Barry? I mean, he's gone through an awful lot for me. I do that every day. And that darn director. I mean, acting as if the only reason that Barry was nice to me was because, well, you know. Because he thought there was something personal between you? Right. I mean, just because Barry was being attentive and considerate in his dressing room. And that was stupid, I suppose. Because every girl who auditions winds up getting charmed into Barry Sullivan's dressing room. Yes. Yes, what? It was stupid of him. Oh, I don't know. I imagine I might have thought the same thing under those circumstances. Donald Hollinger, if I were the kind of girl who could slap your face for that, I'd slap your face for that. I see, I see. You might be able to slap a non-entity. It's only entities you can't slap. You? A non-entity? Donald Hollinger? Promising young writer who just last month got a wave in the hall from the editor-in-chief who calls you by name? Fellow. He called me fellow. That could be anybody. Well... I'm surprised. Well, we all have our own bag. Barry Sullivan is charming. I am surprised. Donald, I have a real problem to solve, and you're not being very helpful. I'm going. This problem is outside of my sphere of influence. Well, you certainly aren't yourself tonight. That's entirely possible. Whoever I am bids you good night. <laughs> good night, Donald. Fellow. Just call me fellow. <laughs> 
You pig! <laughs> coming over. I thought it might be easier to talk here. Oh, no. Are you kidding? I, I appreciate it. You've been rehearsing? How could you tell? I heard you. You pig. Good, very good. Strong, exciting. Yeah, up to there, I'm just great. That's exactly why I'm here. And I'm not leaving until you learn to slap me. I don't know why you just don't get another girl. I mean, it certainly would be a lot easier. Miss Mary, you remember what I told you yesterday about helping young and eager people to get started? Yes. Well, that was yesterday. Today, I'd rather choke than tell Sidney he was right about you and I was wrong. Life wouldn't be worth living. <laughs> Come on. Slap me. Yeah. <sighs> well, I think I just have to get into it a little bit. OK, OK. Get yourself steamed up. Well, well you could help me. All right. Why don't we do the scene from the play? Oh, I'd have to get a lot angrier than that. Maybe we ought to just make up something as we go along. Fine, fine. We'll improvise. Yeah, right. Okay, now, uh, you'll be you, uh, and I'll be me. Good. All right, now, I came here last night, in the middle of the night, uninvited. Right. And you made all these, uh, these, these overtures to me. Good, that's very good. And here I am, back this morning. Right. Okay, now we'll just make up something about that. All right, let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Sullivan! Oh, wait a minute. That's... <laughs> Mr. Sullivan, I would think you'd be ashamed to come back here after what you did last night. <laughs> Look, kid, you know how it is with us actors from Hollywood. We get hungry, we eat. And it doesn't matter to you who you hurt, does it? Of course not. There's a broken heart for every light on Broadway. All right, hit me. Not yet. Play things. That's all we are to you. Just play things. You're callous and indifferent. That's right, baby. Hit me. No, wait. <laughs> and now here you are, back at the scene of the crime, taking advantage again of this innocent young girl, an innocent young girl who had, who had faith in you. And what did you do? You came here in the middle of the night. <laughs> What did I do? I avenged your honor. Mr. Sullivan, are you all right? Fine, fine. Are you sure? Well, it's not generally known in show business, but I've got a glass jaw. A bigger man would give credit where credit is due. Mr. Sullivan, and this is my father, Mr. Marie. How do you do, Mr. Marie? Pleased to know you. Oh, Daddy, you made a terrific mistake. Actually, you came in at a very awkward moment. For you, sir. No, you don't understand. I was trying to teach your daughter to slap me. It's a... Technical problem. Well, I have no such problem. I'm hip. <laughs> Loose cap. Oh, Mr. Sullivan, I'm so sorry. Oh. My, my father just didn't understand. That's perfectly all right. I mean, I'd better see a dentist before the matinee. Well, you don't have much time. If you excuse me, I'll see you later at the theater. Yes, I'll be there. Goodbye, Mr. Murray. It's been most unusual meeting you. Mr. Sullivan, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nice looking fellow. Yeah, I certainly hope you haven't changed that. Do you have any disinfectant? My knuckles are bleeding. Oh, I've got some curacrome in the bathroom. Don't you have anything stronger than that? What for? Well, there's lots of poison on people's teeth. Oh, Daddy. Here, I gotta get dressed to go to the theater. Well, I'll be going home as long as you're all right now. Daddy, I was always all right. I know that now. But a father has a right to protect his daughter from a top-notch movie star who's making improper advances. Daddy, we were improvising a scene. You tell it your way, and I'll tell it mine. <laughs> well, then. Hello. Oh, hello there. Come on in. Yeah. You see? Good as new. Oh, I'm glad. I, I really am glad. I came to apologize about my father. He gets excited, but he means well. Oh, I understand perfectly. You're a daughter worth protecting. Thank you. You're really very nice. I only wish I could live up to your faith in me. You will. I promise you. We'll rehearse that scene again today after the matinee, and this time you'll get it. 
Hey, Barry, have you seen that girl? Oh, there you are. Listen, the kids of Pennis couldn't wait until Saturday. You're going on this afternoon. Me? I don't like it any better than you do, but it's either you or the stage manager, and he can't fit into the costume. <laughs> well, you got what you wanted. Good luck. <laughs> And, dear, I know about this little problem of yours, but try to forget yourself, try to think of my problem. I'll try. If you have any small affection for me, any at all, when you go out on that stage today, I want you to slap my face and slap it hard. I'll try. I need it. Yes, I'll certainly do my best. I've got to have it. Yes, I know it, I know Even it. If at the last minute you lose your nerve, if something inside you says I can't slap his face, then hit me here, hard, right on the side of the neck. It looks good, it won't hurt. Yeah, are you sure? I swear. Well, gee, it just seems hard to believe. I'll show you. Okay. Hey! My cap! <laughs> I can't stand to see a man hit a woman. I have a quirk. Oh, I only came here to apologize. The apology is accepted. Now, will you please help me lift it off? Look, honey, I'm sorry about last night. I just got steamed up. Well, Don, well, last night you had a right to, but not now. How was a guy to tell? Ask. Mr. Sullivan, are you all right? Oh, fine, fine. Why is it that you're the only one who can hit me? <laughs> Thus, he'd be able to gather a whole thread of knowledge later if he'd pick then it possible that Harry see. And his young, smooth profile, that stood standing out against the moonlight. And his father said, son, forever you'll remember Ireland and this day. When all of us together, shoulder to shoulder, walked across the hills in the valley and said, up the rebels, up the rebels. Have you something for me, woman? Please. Please. <laughs> Have you something for me, woman? Hit him. Hit him. You pig. us. Here, all of us. Me included. He'd, he'd have said, what more can I expect? An informer. If, if he could just get to his feet and look at us, then he'd laugh. Ha ha. And, and cry out, the cause. That, that, that's what he would have told us. What more can I expect in a former? My life has been parceled in. in the theatrical section. The revolutionary heart is moving to a larger theater. Does it say who they're moving to a larger theater without? You mean Rocky Marie at 108 pounds from Brewster, New York in the purple trunks? Mm -hmm. No, nope, there's no mention of her. Oh, well, no wonder you're looking in the wrong place. You better try the sports section. <laughs> oh. 